Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the concept of sampling because there's a lot of different ways in which we can choose the sample. So let's take a look. First of all, we have a word that's different from sampling called the census. Now, most of us are familiar with the concept of census, but what is the definition? Well, it turns out that the census means that you're gathering data from every member of the population, every single one, you don't take a representative sample, you take data from every member of the population. That's very difficult to do and very expensive, so it's not done very often for obvious reasons. But at least that way you get absolute accurate data, again of course, if everyone participating in the census is telling the truth. Next, the sampling frame. Now the sampling frame is a list of elements belonging to the population from which the sample will be drawn. The sampling frame should be identical to the population, ideally, but not always practical. So therefore, the list of elements don't always belong to the exact population. Ideally, you want it to be, but sometimes you use a sample, not always all of the members of the sample belonging to the population to still try to represent the population. Sometimes we don't have a choice. The sampling plan, that is the method that is selected to select the elements of the sample or the method that we use to select the elements of the sample. So you want to plan that, you don't want to do it at random. You want to find out specifically how you're going to set up the sample. The judgment sample, that is used as a known population characteristic to validate your actual sample. So what you do is you pick a characteristic that you're already are familiar with that you know what it is. For example, you may know that the average height of the people in your population is five foot nine. Then you pick a sample, you test or you question a small group of people in your sample, and then you see if you get the same result as the total population. If you don't, you don't have a good sample because it should represent the population. Next, we look at the probability sample. So there's different kinds of samples. What is a probability sample? That is that each subject in the sample is picked based on the probability. In other words, if you want to have a high probability that the people you question are farmers, you do not want to take a sample from the inner city. You want to take a sample of a small town far out in the country. The probability then that you'll get a farmer on the line when you call people up is much higher. Random sample. Let's say you don't care, you want to random just call people, and you don't care if you're hitting a particular population or not. It's random, you just a random, you just dial numbers at random and see who pops up, and so you don't know exactly where your sample is coming from. But that may be by design. A systematic sample may be such that you go down the phone book. Well, we don't use phone books anymore, but let's say we did. You pick every tenth person on the list or every 100 person on the list. That is a simple, uh, what we call a systematic sampling so that you don't sit there, you try to stratify it, you don't try to get certain types of people in your sample. You simply say, I'm just going to go down the list and pick every tenth or every twentieth or so person off the list. Stratified sampling stratified, yeah, that's spelled correctly, that's the characterization of the population in groups, and then you pick a number from each group. For example, you go ahead and you take a certain group that you know is going to be mostly farmers, and you take a certain group that's going to be mostly factory workers, and you take a group that's going to be mostly engineers, and then you pick a certain number from each group. That's called stratification. You want to make sure that every type of person in your population is represented and they want to pick an equal number from each. So that's called stratified sample. Or you may want a cluster sample. You may not want to pick the same number of people from each group that makes up your total population. You may simply want to pick more farmers and less engineers and so or maybe no factory workers at all and so that way you're going to stratify them, take different strata and only pick from certain strata and not from others and that's considered a cluster sample. So you can see a lot of thought needs to be put into how you're going to collect data and then you can also see that the results of a survey can really depend on that. And so when you listen to the results of a survey you have to wonder how did they pick the sample? Is it really representative of the whole population? And that is how it's done.